Welcome to ETAV webinar, Seamless Transition of Microgrids from Grid Connected to Islanded Mode. So ETAB Microgrid Control Solution include mainly ETAB Microgrid Controller, which is a supervisory controller, and a gateway, okay, ETAB ICE Gateway. Uh, and uh, this ICE Gateway I will discuss has two roles, and with this dual or two components, that one runs at very high speed and the other one that runs at the lower speed, we can achieve uh, both high speed uh, unplanned eye landing, but at the same time doing a dynamic, sophisticated logics to be able to do uh, everything all the way from planning the unplanned eye landing strategy as well as all the way to optimizations, do advanced calculations for the macro grid, be able to do stuff like forecasting. So in a typical solutions that we have these two components, uh, as I said, we have a gateway and we have a macro grid controller. One of the roles of this gateway to understand is that is typical when we are dealing with a macro grid, we are dealing with different assets that may communicate with different protocols. One of the jobs of the gateway is to be able to communicate through different protocols, 6150, DMP3, Modbus, and all other common protocols. And even it has a hardwire connections, the analog inputs or uh, 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 digital inputs and outputs. Uh, and convert everything to a unified kind of protocol at this point, DMP3, and soon it's going to be Modbus 2, to an ETAB macro gate controller. Uh, the second important job of this gateway is that it has a built-in PLC that it runs at a few milliseconds uh, execution rate and it can do things fast in Ireland. Uh, in a typical microgrid uh, control environment, in order to do a good demonstrations, you need to have a lab with the typical real-time digital simulator, then you have your hardware, you uh, connect them together, you have your microgrid model in a real-time simulator, and then you have your microgrid controller, you run scenarios and looks at the performance of the system. But in ETAB, we use a digital twin concept. It means that our microgrid controller, it has an identical digital twin that can be used in the ETAB simulation environment and that basically anything we want to uh, test, develop, enhance, uh, do evaluations, we can do in the simulation environment to make sure that it works. And then this digital twin gets deployed into the box. This digital twin is not the model, it's the actual code that runs inside the box, runs actually in the software environment. It's a cross-platform, basically, technology that runs in both Linux and Windows. And this allows us to use it for design and feasibility study. We can do evaluations, test it in front of the user. We can use it for sizings of the assets and we can do optimal settings, and also we can use it to our develop and test uh, as a developer and tester in, the, in our company. So that's another great advantage that we actually develop the digital twin, test it once we're happy, we deploy and test it in the hardware. Okay, let's now go to the demonstration. So far, what we have done was a pure simulation using the digital twin of the microgrid as well as the digital twin of the microgrid controller. Now let's take this to another level. The next level is we go ahead and look at this microgrid controller. We can uh, we have a part that we can define the settings of this microgrid controller. So let's imagine that uh, I want to test this in a real time with the real time digital simulator. So how it's going to be the entire system, the entire system is going to be modeled in the real-time digital simulator. And then the microgrid controller is going to be a hardware uh, connected to the communication. Right now, I have my microgrid controller at the IP address of 10.10.10.172. And this computer that we are working on right now is at the IP address of 10.10.045. ETAB has a DMP3, interf uh, DMP3 interface that can uh, put the data out, all the measurements that microgrid needs, 
and then Mockery Control Hardware at this IP address has a DMP3 client that can grab those data, process them the same logic that runs in the digital twin and sends the output back to the Mockery grid. So what we are going to do here, as you see in the communication sections, we have the IP address of this device. We are going to use the 20001 as the port number for DMP3. It has source ID, uh, destination ID, some of the default numbers I'm not going to touch. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to deploy. What the deploy does, it creates a package, which is a MGC file. It creates a package of all the logics, which are a DLL of the digital twin, plus all the settings, the connectivity, the network informations, and put them in a package. And we can go ahead and upload that into our microgrid controller. So we go here and say upload. This controller deploy, upload. So all the logic settings, everything is now moved, uploaded into the box in a few seconds. Done. So you can go ahead and we can look at the settings of the microgrid controller. Okay, different settings that we have here. Now, once that's done, let's come back here and say that I've created a study case with a little bit longer simulation time. I have about 180 seconds. I want to I give more time to be able to go on the real time side to be able to go through the different dashboard and see how it works. But after two minutes, 120 seconds, I am going to, uh, we have an event to trip the circuit breaker at the point of interconnections and see how the microgrid controller actually transition this uh, microgrid from grid connected to the islanded mode. So we looked at a study case. The other thing that we need to look at here is that we have a setting here, simulation mode. So if it is normal, it just runs the pure simulation. Okay, it runs a pure simulation. If I run a tester mode, it runs it in a, a real-time manner, but the logic is not getting executed here. The data is transferred over communication to the hardware. It's like a hardware in the loop and hardware processing it and sending the output back to the ETA, that where the system is, okay? Now this system, it was faster than real time. If you run this system, it's gonna run less than 180 seconds. So this means that for this size of the system, or a little bit even larger, we can always go real time. Keep in mind, we are running every one millisecond here in the transient stability, but the data gets exchanged over DMP3 with a speed of or the, with the resolutions of the microgrid execution rate every five seconds. So data goes every five seconds to the basically uh, DMP3. We can control that. We can go a little bit even faster. We can go even every one second to the DMP3, even though microgrid controller runs every five seconds. Okay. So let's do that. So we are in the tester mode right now in the tester mode. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So it's supposed to take 180 seconds. Okay, now let's go to ETAB. Let's go to our uh, macro grid page. Let me refresh this page. You see that we are grid connected. Grid connection is on. We have about 2.60 megawatt import from the grid. Frequency is 50 Hertz. I have about 98.9% .9 voltage at both sides of the grid and macro grid. Okay. We can look at our energy storage at this point. Uh, we have we have a command, but macro grid is in advisory mode. It means that it doesn't send any command. You see that? The macro grid doesn't charge. If I go here and say that I want to go out of the advisory mode and come back to energy storage, in a second, let me increase the resolution here. In about a second or so, we are going to be switching to the uh, enabled mode. So, Mockery controller sends a command of 103 and we are char uh, discharging 103 and we are dis actually discharging 103 in the system too. Now, if we go to the page, I have unplanned ironing page. And in this page, you see that at this point, it says that if we lose the grid, you see that this gets updated every five seconds. If we lose the grid, we are supposed to shed three loads, very similar to what we saw in the simulation. Um, and battery has to go to grid forming. Now, in about a few seconds, once we reach 30 seconds, once we reach to the two minutes, macro grid is going to switch to the uh, uh, islanded mode. And because this information is already transferred to the gateway in the simulation, uh, it knows what to do. So it doesn't need to wait, 
okay so we go now to the uh, macro grid and let's look at the macro grid here so in about few seconds we should go off let me just in reduce the resolution to, uh, the resolution here so we see that we are in the grid connection on and in about few seconds we should transition to off there you go now we are in the islanded mode things happen very quickly okay in less than a second system gets back to normal you see that both side frequency or 50 system didn't collapse okay now let's go and take a look at the load look at here you get here i have three loads that they lost power okay only two loads have power so we have done a successful load shedding here microgrid is in islanded mode and we can look at what's happening with energy storage okay we are not sending any more command to the battery battery is in the grid forming and the power gets determined by the system voltage and frequency no more command and soc is gonna drop at uh soc at this point we are exporting power we are exporting power so soc is going to go down so now let's go back simulation is done we just ran for three minutes and let's look at the performance of the system here we did the low three load sheddings and if i go and plot the bus voltage if you remember the simulations we exactly get the similar performance okay system comes back to normal so with that we show that actually how nicely you can use etab as a real-time digital simulator and how easy it is that from the software simulation go all the way to the hardware simulation thank you for your attention